Alright, yo, we just got done with school, alhamdulillah. The best feeling is when you get out of school, honestly, because then you just, you can do whatever you want. But I'm going to my old gym at LA Fitness. I haven't been there in so long, but I bought a three-year membership and I just haven't been going, so I've, I felt really bad. I've been feeling really bad. But I'm really excited because this is the first gym I ever worked out when I moved out here. So I'll show you guys. We're gonna, we might hit chest today. We're going to hit chest today, inshallah. So I'm excited and I'll show you guys the workout. So I'll see you guys later. Sit down. Alright y'all, I'm back with the pro bodybuilder Zizo <laughs> and today he's he's actually never done flat bench before so we don't even know what his PR is so today we're gonna see what his max is we're, we'll try to max out together inshallah so we'll see how that goes I'm predicting 275 I'll what do you think? 275 from 275? Really well. Hopefully he'll hit 3 because he's like 400 pounds so Wait, if he doesn't hit 315 that's embarrassing I don't take serious like Abdurrahman guys Yeah, yeah. he takes serious uh, uh, I'm a natural bodybuilder so we'll see how this goes Honestly, this guy put me on crazy, so we'll see. Yeah, I did. And I'm about to make some crazy gains in the next few days. We'll see, we'll see. Al Mahdi, as in Sahih Muslim, you'll find this hadith. He will come out, he will appear in Mecca. He will appear in Mecca. And the scholars will identify him with the descriptions that the Prophet ﷺ placed about him. There are certain features about him. White forehead, sharp eyes, big, big sharp eyes, a thin nose which is slightly hooked on the top. Al-Mahdi. They know his other signs. Some of, other, some of his other signs are the following. So that no one can think Al-Mahdi is someone else. He has particular signs. They are all authentic narrations from the Prophet wasallam. You'll find them in Sahih Bukhari, in Sahih Muslim and other Sahih. The authenticated hadiths. There will be a group of Arabs from within the Jazeera Al Arabiya, from within the Arabian Peninsula, somewhere near Mecca. They will hear about the Mahdi and they will not agree with him. They, they, they'll say he is not the real one. And they will come from an eastern direction of Mecca, they'll come in with an army to, to, to fight Al Mahdi. So the first people Al Mahdi will fight are Arabs who are under the banner of Islam but they've gone wrong as they are approaching a group of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the earth swallow them they all die and a group of them fight him and Al-Mahdi destroys them all Prophet ﷺ said he will fight offsprings of two Khalifas and we've had many Khalifas in the past. We've had the Ottoman Empire, we've had the Abbasi, the Fatimi, we've had the Umawi Khilafah, we have many different. And when he says the offsprings, meaning of them. Allahu Alam, which ones exactly? But the first ones are Arabs. And Allahu Alam, they could be of the Abbasi or the Umawi ones. And, and he said he will wipe them off. So the first of the Arabs. And the companions asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what if among those Muslims who fight him, are proper Muslims and they die within that battle like that what's going to happen to them Rasul Sallallahu said every one of them will be gathered on a day of judgment on the intentions they died for on the intentions they died for even if they were the wrong army that's one of the first major signs of Al-Mahdi All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. Right now, I'm just dry scooping some creatine. I'm really, really excited for the summer. So I right now, I have two more weeks left of school, and I think one of the most important things is time management, you know? You have to make time for the things you love to do because especially if you're a student in school, it's very important to find things or hobbies outside of studying because you're, you'll get burnt out very quickly if you just study all day, you know? So I think it's very important to manage your time wisely and efficiently and to just have time for things that you love, you know? Like for me, I love working out, alhamdulillah. Also like keeping up with my prayers helps me a lot, like making dua and asking Allah for help. It really kind of just puts everything into perspective and it's just something I always say is no matter how hard you try, if you don't have Allah's blessing, you won't be successful, you know? Versus if you try your best and you leave the rest to Allah, you'll always be successful, no matter what it is, you know? Whether the outcome in your head is good or bad, at the end of the day, Allah's plan is better than anything we can plan for ourselves. So that is one thing I would love to leave you guys with. 
But as y'all saw today's workout, I failed my top set at 295. Since my goal is to hit 315 in the summer, so in two weeks, inshallah, I'm gonna go for the 315. I kind of tested it out today, but it felt really heavy. But it's okay, alhamdulillah, whether I hit it or not, alhamdulillah, at the end of the day. But thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. The support has been unreal. If you guys enjoyed that video, let's just try to get it to 20 likes. But other than that, school, we're almost on alhamdulillah. So right now it's just the final two weeks. It's just time to study the hardest. And I have about seven exams to study for in the next over the next two weeks. So any dua you guys can make for me is, will be greatly appreciated. But thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum.